You can probably already tell, but this is a zoomed in picture that was taken from an upstairs window, specifically on Bluff Street. The description from witnesses was this man who seemed to be having some kind of a breakdown on the street in the rain. Things in the house quickly got way worse. The kids noticed a smell of rotten eggs everywhere and every morning at 5.15, their beds would shake. Elizabeth the first was a man. And despite all that, this house actually recently sold. But in the listing that was posted, you can actually see areas that were featured in the police cam footage during the investigation. UFOs? Any UFOs? Did you ask about that? I certainly asked about it. And? Can't tell. I'm back, it's your boy FITCI to the end. Today, we're gonna be taking a look at these TikTok videos today. Let's try to get to 500 likes this video. If you guys like the video, make sure to subscribe try to get to 30k it says that around 80 percent of you guys are not subscribed so if you're watching this just subscribe bro let's try to get to 30k fam if you guys like the chain check the link down in the description you can get a 10 percent discount if you use fit 10 an additional one percent discount if you subscribe to healing stoicism just remember to text the chat box in the corner and you will get the discounts added thank you the only known photo of smiling was reportedly taken in 2018 in Fulton, Missouri. You can probably already tell, but this is a zoomed in picture that was taken from an upstairs window, specifically on Bluff Street. The description from witnesses was this man who seemed to be having some kind of a breakdown on the street in the rain. But what was eerie about this was that every witness reported him smiling. But pay very close attention if you think you see something in his hand. And quickly before we dive in, thank you guys so much for all the support as of late. If you're not already, click the link in my bio and go follow on Insta. The report was that the man essentially disappeared down the street into the rain, but he wasn't gone for long. He'd broken into the home of a woman who lived nearby alone, and that resulted in that woman losing her head. Witnesses described this harrowing scene of seeing this man walk down the street with a knife in one hand and her head in his other. Fled before police arrived, but not without witnesses catching a glimpse to give a police sketch. The entirety of being seen, he continued to smile. Oh yeah, that guy for sure had some mental problems. How you gonna just walk down? He said, walk with her head, just smiling, just happy, just like, yes, I do this. Weird, bro. Unhappy people will always be jealous of you over things that you have absolutely no control over which is why you should always stay on high alert and make sure that you're always protected. I'm not saying to not make new friends, but whenever you make those new friends, make sure that you are on high alert. Story time. This story was submitted by Nohemi. I went ahead and tagged her down below. So Nohemi had moved into a new town with her now husband where she knew absolutely no one. She was excited when she found that she had made a new friend and they quickly became close. They would hang out together, go out for coffee while the kids were at school or go over each other's houses. Nohemi found herself sharing her life with this new friend and her new friend also sharing her life with Nohemi. Now Nohemi has always been extremely happy with her marriage. Her and her husband has always had a wonderful relationship and she doesn't know if maybe she came off as bragging because her husband has always been a good man to her. She quickly found out that her friend was starting to become a bit envious. Her marriage was actually extremely toxic. It was almost like she wanted everything that Nohemi had. If Nohemi would buy a new blender, her new friend would get a blender. If she would get new curtains, her new friend would get new curtains. If she would change the color scheme of her house, her new friend would do the same. A few months go by and Nohemi realizes that a lot of things in her house are breaking down. She's getting into a lot of arguments with her husband and it's almost like her marriage is going downhill. She can feel the envy coming from her friend to a point that she starts dreaming about her friend. She's now smelling herbs and candles that she's never smelled before. One night she woke up and decided that she needed to pray. Something in her was telling her that she needed to pray over her home. So Nohemi grabs her Bible and her anointing oil and begins to pray. And out of nowhere, she finds herself rebuking the name of this friend. She then says out loud that no evil will come through her front door that the evil stops right there that whoever is wishing things against her and her family will no longer enter the home after that night it was almost as if her friend fell off the face of this earth because she never heard from her again her friend never came around again and now nohemi's family her husband her relationship her home has all gone back to normal there's a famous line that i kind of live by by drake he said i've been losing friends and finding peace and if you ask me 
Facts. This girl was found frozen in ice after six hours, but what happened next shocked everyone and left doctors speechless. Jean Hillard was driving home during a blizzard in Minnesota when her car skidded into a ditch. Her friend lived nearby, so she started walking. It was negative 30 degrees Fahrenheit outside and the wind was blowing into her face. She reached her friend's driveway but just couldn't go any further and just 15 feet from his door she collapsed on the ground. She was in the snow for six hours and turned into a human icicle. Her friend came out and saw her like this frozen and ghost-like. At the hospital, she was so frozen doctors couldn't even open her mouth to put a thermometer. Her skin was so hard that a needle broke when they tried to put it in her. The doctors then decided to put warm packs of water around her body. And in just six hours with no amputations and no brain damage, she was conscious and speaking with her family. My mom and I were traveling to New Mexico when I realized that we forgot to gas up. We ended up stopping at a gas station in the middle of nowhere. Once we had added gas to the car, we realized that the car would not start. My mom and I just sat there trying to figure out what to do next since the attendant at the gas station had stated that everything was closed on Sunday. Out of nowhere, we see this tall, handsome Native American man approach us. He said absolutely nothing, walked up to the hood, motioned for us to open it. He did something down there and then told us to start up the car. The minute he said this, the car started up. We were so grateful, we thanked him. My mom even tried to give him some money, but he declined. My mom then told me to force him to take the money. So she went to hand it to me. I looked away from him for one second. The minute I looked back, he was gone. There was nowhere for him to hide. There was nothing but dirt roads all around us. We even went up to the gas station attendant to ask if he had seen where he went. He says he never saw anyone out there with us. We were bewildered to say the least. My mom to this day states that that must have been a guardian angel. I mean, I'd hope so. I like how she said her mom tried to force her to take, force her to give him the money. That's really how some people are. I know a lot of people like that. If you're someone like that, put it down in the comments. Something from outer space crashed in the Arctic and it's traveling to the core of this morning. Okay. So back in 94, this meteor crashed and they made a lake about a quarter mile wide. Okay. It has been progressively getting deeper and deeper. It was like quarter mile deep, and like a half mile deep. And by this point, it's about nine miles deep already. In 28 years? Divers, when they try to go down to the bottom and see what's going on. They get these weird feelings of like dread, they feel sick, so that they come back up. And they've tried sending probes down, but the live feed starts messing up as it gets deeper. And then if they try to push it, it, it starts to burn out everything. The divers that have gone down there, they say that they see this weird spiraling green light that's down at the bottom. What's crazy is that this isn't like a theory. No, these are- This is like a real thing these that are is like, like documented. from like someone with a doctor that has gone and like researched this stuff. That's actually crazy. But like, what could it be? I have no idea what it could be. Neither do they. That is the part that freaks me out the most. Yeah. If they can't explain it. Yeah, I can see, honestly see why a lot of people have this fear of the ocean. Because when you really go, if, you, if you're a diver or someone that's on the ocean a lot, you really have no idea what's beneath you. One second, it could be a fish, shark, dolphin, or it could be a freaking megalodon ready to chew your whole boat apart. So I'm actually supposed to be getting ready for work, and here I am in my basement making a video because I heard some noises coming from down here, and it always happens when I'm home alone. So my mom is extremely sensitive just like me, and she mentioned how she felt like there was a male spirit hiding in my basement. So here we are. We're going to try the AI filter, and I'm going to see if I can find him. Again, I feel like there's a presence here already. I don't care to communicate, but I'm gonna see if I can pick him up in the AI filter. Hmm. I have since nicely asked them to leave, so let's see if we pick anything up again. All gone. So moral of the story, if you feel something, just ask them to leave. Nine times out of 10, Nope. As if they're a friendly spirit and not a freaking demon. Imagine it's just the devil. And he's just like, hey, can you please leave? Bro's just like, what if? And, and you're just like, um, this is my house. They're like, I don't care. I'm coming to kill it. Gotta be careful. Three conspiracy theories you may have never heard of part five. The flag moving in the wind. No stars in the sky whatsoever. The misaligned shadows, these have all been points made in the conspiracy theory. For years, conspiracists have argued that NASA staged the landing and that the secret has been protected by the CIA ever since.
One of the strangest responses to the disaster was evidence being shown online of the snow being fake videos appeared all over the internet allegedly showing the snow being put under tests to prove it was fake. Theorists claim that the snow was government generated as part of a sinister plot instigated by shadow elites. Queen Elizabeth I was a man. The theory goes that Queen Elizabeth died as a child, and to prevent the end of the royal line, she was replaced with a young boy. This theory is said to explain why the ruler remained chaste throughout her reign. I remember seeing those fake snow TikToks. I was just like, interesting. It's kind of weird because snow does not burn like that. So it was kind of weird to see that. But apparently I heard Queen Elizabeth I didn't even like freak anyone like she was just so like away from all that activity she didn't have any reign left any any offspring at least i think it was queen elizabeth the first if i'm wrong let me know down in the comments on the night of january 16th 1984 nine-year-old annie swartz woke up suddenly to the sound of voices coming from somewhere outside of her door when she got out of bed and walked into the hallway she realized those voices were coming from downstairs and they weren't people talking they were people screaming at each other. However, just as quickly as the yelling started, it stopped and the house went quiet. Annie was still curious what was going on, so she tiptoed her way down the stairs, but when she got to the bottom, she didn't see anyone and the house was still quiet. Then, from somewhere outside the house, she heard a sound. When she turned around to see what it was, what she saw scared her so badly that she instantly sprinted back upstairs, leapt into her bed, and pulled the covers up over her head. Annie would eventually fall asleep after convincing herself that what she had seen was just a bad dream. But, as she would learn the next morning, that was no dream, and her real-life nightmare was only just beginning. Here's some of the scariest unknown creatures caught on camera, part 7. The creature covered in this video was caught on a surveillance camera on May 21st, 2022, outside the Amarillo Zoo. At around 1.26 a.m., the surveillance camera, which is motion activated, notified the zoo officials that movement was detected. Attached to the notification was an image. Unfortunately, the camera in question only takes snapshots when activated, so no video footage was captured of the creature. However, this image was enough to get the attention of the city officials who posted the image on their official Twitter account asking for the public's opinion on what it could be. They listed a few ideas themselves, stating it could be a strange person in a hat or the infamous chupacabra. Many gave their thoughts, but none were ever confirmed. Luckily, no animals or people were injured and no sign of a disturbance was found within the zoo walls. But the question still remains. Who or what was captured that morning? I don't know. I was looking at that image. I was thinking to myself, honestly, it might just be like an animal just standing up for like a split second. Like I could see it being like maybe a bigger fox, a wolf, or a coyote. But at the same time, I'm not too sure. I doubt it was the chupacabra, whatever the freak they're talking about. Because if it really was the chupacabra, I feel like it would have eliminated a lot of animals. A lot of animals would have been slaughtered. And um, if I'm being honest... I don't know, it just looked a little bit puny. Truckers spot a hitchhiking ghost? At 2 a.m., a truck driver named William Church was driving along Arizona's Route 87 when he spotted something unusual. William said he saw someone or something standing in the road, then noticed a bright glare in his dash camera. William said there were no other cars around and believes if you look closely, the ghostly figure appears to be walking. The haunting dash footage was released and the internet is divided. Some say it's a ghost, others say it's something else like a glare or a tumbleweed. Those siding with this being supernatural noted that a fatal accident took place less than a mile from the recorded figure. And many others have claimed to have witnessed paranormal activity in that very same area. Ooh, that's spooky. What do you think it is? Did you know that the hours between 3 a.m. and 5 a.m. are known as witching hour? This is when the paranormal world is at its highest. And even if you're not sensitive, you're bound to have some type of experience. These are the times where it's recommended for you to be in high alert and always remain protected. But of course, do I ever listen? No. So story time. When I used to work night shift at the hospital, there were nights where I would get out at 3 a.m. Now this was before COVID, so a lot of the stores were open 24 seven. So on the nights that I would get out at 3 a.m., they were my favorite time to go grocery shopping. 
I would always hit up Walmart and it was a dream because there was never anyone there. So 3 a.m. I pull up to the parking lot and I realize that there's no other cars there. It's just me. I pull up, I'm getting out. As I'm walking towards the front door, these three ladies just pop up out of nowhere. My first thought was, that's odd. There were no other cars here, but at the same time, they could have walked. As we make our way to the store, I walk in and I can see them in the light now. And I look at them and I realize that they literally look like they just crawled out of a sewer. And that's not me being judgy, like they literally looked and smelled like they just crawled out of a sewer. But I'm like, not my business, I came here to get what I needed to get and to get home. So as I'm walking through the aisles, I realize that these ladies are now following me. If not one, but all three. Every aisle I go to, I'm running into them constantly. At first, I think that it's probably just a coincidence, but I'm hitting different aisles. I'm going from like the shoe aisle to the makeup aisle to like the dog food aisle. Like I'm jumping around and everywhere I turn, I'm running into these ladies. Now I'm getting all types of bad feelings from these girls, but at the same time, I'm not thinking of a spiritual sense. I'm thinking of like a human trafficking sense. So I'm on high alert and I'm like, I shouldn't have stopped here at 3 a.m. So I try to like hurry up and these girls are like laughing and just following me everywhere. I try to rationalize it and just be like, maybe I'm just being paranoid, I'm tired, I'm sleep deprived, I'm gonna give them one more chance. So I kind of turn around and end up in the pajama section where I feel like I've lost them. As I'm kind of like digging through the racks, I look over and I see the girl walking this way and she says to the other girl, there she is. So I'm like, great it's not in my head like they really are following me at this point i decide to go to the front and try to get the attention of one of the workers but when i get to the front there's absolutely no one at any of the registers and i know walmart is notorious for not having people behind the register but there's literally not even one person anywhere so as i'm standing there the one girl kind of comes up from behind me and says tatiana oh tatiana she knew my name at that point it hit me these things are not from this world these things are the words they happen to be lingering around in the parking lot when they saw me coming in by myself they decided to follow me in to see if they can attach themselves to me i dropped everything that was in my hands and i ran to my car the whole time i'm hearing like whispering and like weird noises coming from behind me like i'm getting chills like just thinking about it now but as i look back there's no one there but i'm hearing the whispering and all this stuff and i run to my car i practically like hit the gas the all the way home i kept thinking i was gonna see them like in my back seat I get home and I'm like praying every prayer. Like I didn't sleep the rest of that night. Like I didn't sleep. I was like wide awake the whole night because I was freaking out. So these are things that are always lingering around. Mind you, it was 3 a.m. I'm by myself. They saw me as an easy target. Thankfully, they weren't able to hitch a ride with me, but it's so easy, especially if you're under the influence and if you're outside, you're extremely vulnerable. You have no idea what's out there just lurking. And okay, so she said 3 a.m. To 5 a.m. I'm thinking about it like, all right, I'm in New York right now, you know what I'm saying? 3 a.m., 5 a.m. So you tell me if I'm in Vegas and it's like 11, 8, 11 p.m., the spirits would come attack me, or is that just local to the time region? Okay, I don't know. Can you tell a place has a dark history just from looking at it? I'm gonna show you a listing and we're gonna see. Also, this is a series to so follow along. This is the Watts family home in Colorado, where Chris and Shanann Watts lived with their two children. Chris Watts is a family annihilator who took the life of his pregnant wife and two daughters in 2018. And despite all that, this house actually recently sold. But in the listing that was posted, you can actually see areas that were featured in the police cam footage during the investigation. Because when the crime first happened, Chris pretended he had no idea what happened to his family. But you can see in a lot of this footage, he's acting so suspiciously. So much so that one of his neighbors actually tipped off to police that he thought something was just not right with Chris. We still don't know from Chris exactly why this happened, but we can infer that he wanted to start over a new life with his mistress. Chris is currently in jail, but a new family now lives inside that home. Would you be willing to live in a home like this? Hell yeah, I better get some discounts though. What? Someone got what in here? Oh yeah, I'm getting some discounts. I'm not standing here for nothing less. That is a nice home though, I'm not gonna lie. I don't know how much it goes for in Colorado, but. I really don't think I'm ever gonna be able to this shit. Listen to me. Listen to that pedal. Jesus. I mean, this is my whole closet right here. This is my kitchen. And here we go with this shit again. We're just gonna wait and see how long it goes. It's never not. Stop! 
Okay, that works. Okay, so it seems to be wanting to happen now more in the afternoon. But just to prove that there's nothing there. Jesus Christ. This is the cord in question, the coax cable, and it, you can see here, it goes directly from here down to my Wi-Fi. So I could, I guess, open it like this, but one, I would probably be in the way of the camera here since I'm standing here, but um, let's try and test this. Here's the door latched all the way shut. I mean, I'm pulling on that pretty hard and it doesn't come out. But if I were to do this and open it, that just kind of pulls the Wi-Fi back. So, I mean, if this cord was the thing that was pulling it, this probably would have knocked off, but I don't know. Yes, absolutely we can, because I think everyone is obsessed with this and the fact that I do not have it secured. Uh, but as you can see, this goes to my modem, and that is all. It's an old building, so in front of every apartment, they've had to uh, drill holes and then feed these in through, you know, all this to kind of update it. But this building was built in 1932, and if you can't tell, hasn't really been updated too much since 1932. Oh, <laughs> you gotta be kidding me. Five of the most haunted places in the world. Part one, Rainham Hall, Norfolk. The mysterious brown lady, rumored to be Lady Dorothy Walpole, was reported to be one of Rainham Hall's apparitions captured on film in the December 1936. Perviglia, Venice, Italy. Island of Perviglia was once a quarantine zone for people suffering from the plague. In addition, the island was used as a psychiatric hospital in the early 20th century. Ghost hunters claim this spot is now a hotbed of paranormal activity. Bongar Fort, India. This abandoned fortress sticks out in the middle of the wilderness. Legend has it that a sorcerer cast a curse on the area after being rejected by a local princess. Port Arthur, Australia. The spot originally served as a penal colony in the 19th century, where prisoners were forced to induce solitary confinement and mandatory church services to correct bad behavior. Berg Wolfsick, Germany. This 800-year-old castle in the municipality of Wolfsick, Germany, is apparently haunted by a woman who scares off any visitors who pass. She is rumored to be the ghost of Clara von Helfenstein, who was reportedly murdered by her jealous husband. In the mood for a scary story. Before buying their new home, a couple learned that the previous owner had passed away in the middle of the living room. They decided to go forward with the move, and almost immediately upon moving into the home, their young daughter started talking about seeing ghosts. The girl would tell her parents that the ghost was in her playhouse, or the ghost was standing in the corner of the room. She didn't seem afraid at all, and she was young, so her parents brushed it off. Until one day, the daughter told her parents that the ghost was on the back deck and said that it was his birthday, and asked her parents to sing happy birthday to him. So they went along with it, and nicely sang happy birthday to make their daughter happy. Later that day, the couple, out of curiosity, looked up the obituary of the last owner, and they were stunned as they read that it was his birthday. Kids always know. Yeah, that is weird, but... My question I'm thinking is like, would you guys ever buy a house that someone has already died in? Like, I'm not talking about died a couple of years ago. I'm talking about like the previous owner before you bought the property, someone in their family or someone or even them died before, like died in the property before they sold it to you. Would you buy that house? Let me know your thoughts down in the comments. Can you tell a house is haunted just by looking at it? Today we're going through the Zillow listing of the real conjuring house and we're gonna see. This is an 18th century farmhouse in Rhode Island, and it was owned by the Perrin family in the 70s. When they first moved in, the mom would notice that her broom would move on its own, and things around the house would mysteriously be out of place. But things in the house quickly got way worse. The kids noticed a smell of rotten eggs everywhere, and every morning at 5.15 their beds would shake. 
They realized they were being haunted by the ghost of a woman who died on the property in the 1800s named Bathsheba. She was reportedly practicing witchcraft in the house. It's believed that she killed a child during a satanic ritual by sticking a needle into its head. Then we all know the story of Ed and Lorraine Warren coming to the house and getting rid of Bathsheba. But according to people who have lived in this house and visited this house, there's still definitely something haunting the place. Would you ever stay in this house? Yeah, I've actually like seen a lot of things about the Conjuring House, and the Conjuring House is not too far from me. I was thinking about making a vlog there, but it's like, I don't really know all the details about that one. Did you ever ask for information they said we can't tell you? N no, but I will tell you that there were times where I asked for information and then it came slower than I wanted. Prying information out of uh, the bowels of an agency uh, can, can be challenging. UFOs? Any UFOs? Did you ask about that? I certainly asked about it. And? Can't tell you. Sorry. Okay. Can UFOs. I say it used to be that UFOs was the, uh, and, and uh, what is it, Roswell was the biggest conspiracy? Yeah. And now that seems so tame. Right? Right. The idea that right. uh, the government might have an yeah. alien spaceship. <laughs> this man talking about, oh yeah, it seems like the UFOs used to be so tame. Oh, that used to be so back in the day. <laughs> Bro, trust me when I say this man knows UFOs exist. And they do, because the government has literally said that last year. It is what it is, bro. But I think there might be something even bigger that they're not telling us about. It is, it is, it's a, it is what it is. It's funny, because even the president doesn't even know too much. Like, So who, who knows everything? Is there even a person in the government that quote unquote knows everything? I'm not too sure. But anyways, thank you guys for watching. If you guys like the video, please like the video. Remember, 10% off if you use Fit10 to show that you're subscribed. If you want to purchase the chain down below, check the description. And you can get an extra 1% off if you show them that you're subscribed to Healing Stoicism. That's one of my boys page. So thank you guys for watching. Let's try to get to 30,000 subscribers. Let's try to get to 500 likes this video. Love you. Peace out.